I'm going to be speaking about Lucchese member John DeSalvo, who's part of a Bronx crew led by Joey Lebrano. I first met John at Fishco Correction Facility either in the late 1990s or early 2000s. He was serving a three to nine year sentence for manslaughter. His co-defendant was also in Fishkill and was an older Albanian guy that I happened to be friendly with. I remember when John and I first met in the North Yard in Fishkill. He was very quiet and didn't really speak to any of the guys on our court except me. At the time, he told me he was dating a school teacher but was having issues with her. He mentioned that he was from the Bronx and that his grandfather was a wise guy, I think with the West Side. Here's a picture of a West Side member, Vito DeSalvo, with Joe Denti, and this could be the grandfather he was speaking of, but I'm not sure. I would see John in the yard every day, and we would take a walk and talk. But he eventually got transferred, and I don't remember where he was going, but he did wind up in Walkill, which as far as prisons go, was considered the best one in the state. A friend of mine from the neighborhood was also in Walkill at that time. And when that friend came to Fishkill, he told me that no one in Walkill was talking to John, which I found strange because I figured my friend would definitely get along with him, which he said initially he did, but then stopped bothering with John and called him a delusionist and said that John was imagining situations that were not actually true. I felt bad when I heard this because guys in prison tried also placing that same label on me and I knew it was an unjust label, but that's the way prison is. Anyway, for the rest of my time, I didn't see John anymore. He was released in January 2003, and I didn't get released until four and a half years later. The same year I came home, John got himself into trouble again. On July 19, 2007, a person who lived near Newtown Avenue and 31st Street in Astoria, Queens, placed a call to the police. He said he'd seen a man outside of his building with a gun and added that there were four guys who he described as big bully white guys with the new black Mustang and a gray van near them. According to the witness, he seen one guy put a gun into the back of the Mustang. At 2.30 p.m., the responding officers spotted the Mustang in the van, which matched the plate numbers provided by the witness. The police attempted to pull the Mustang over, but it kept driving. And near the intersection at 31st Street, the Mustang and the van went their separate ways. And the police remained following the Mustang, which they cut off a few blocks later. They ordered everyone to exit the car. And when John got out, they noticed he had a gun in his waistband. Naturally, he was arrested. Another person in the back seat of the Mustang was wearing a bulletproof vest. And the police found a metal club, a box of 9mm ammo, and a knife in the back seat. Under the driver's seat, they found the 38. John eventually pled guilty to criminal possession of a weapon in exchange for a five-year sentence and was released in July 2016. The next time I ran into John was in 2017, about a week before the last Lucchese wake I would ever go to. I had to meet the guys at Rayo's for dinner, Mikey DeSantis, Big John, Anthony Boat, and Anthony Guzzo. Before we sat down to eat, we were all outside talking when John DeSalvo and a friend of his walked over. I think it was Anthony Guzzo who introduced John and I as friends, meaning that we were officially introduced as fellow members. And a few minutes later, I was standing with Big John when he asked me if John DeSalvo ever met Mikey DeSantis. John said he hadn't, so I took him over and we introduced Mikey to him as the new acting boss. One of the first things John said to me that day was, you know my friend Joey, right? I'm with Joey. He was speaking of Joey Lebrano, and I told him that Joe was also in Fishkill with me. That night, John came to sit at our table and spoke with us for a little while before leaving with his friend. The next time I seen John was at Dom Tricello's wife's wake in Staten Island, the wake where everyone acted like I had the plague. At some point that night, I was talking to Anthony Guzzo and Joe Cafe, and Anthony wanted me to set up another sit-down with the Gambinos over the pizzeria that he purchased from Frankie Giudici. Obviously, Anthony and Joe Cafe were not acting like I had the plague. But just to give you some type of idea, Mikey gave me the quickest hello imaginable. Patty said hello and ran to catch up with Mikey. I spoke briefly with Sideburns. I had a forced conversation with Joey Amato and gave my condolences to Dom. And that was it. A packed funeral home with our family and everyone else avoided me. Quickly, if anyone would like to donate to this podcast, you know what to do and thank you.
Later that same night, Anthony came over with the smiling Joe Lubrano and said to me, John, you remember Joe from Fishkill? I said I did, and we shook hands. And then Anthony officially introduced Joe and I. John DeSalvo was also standing there, and he came over to me and said, we should all go out one night, and then named every spot on Long Island that I went to. I turned to him and said, how do you know all the places I go to? And smiling, he replied, I know everything. And then wanted to know, how can we get in touch with you? I told him, go through Anthony, and he'll get the message to me. Here's the significance of that conversation. Anthony only knew of one spot that I went to, but not all of them, which meant the only person that could have told John that information was the person watching from across the room, Patty Deloroso. Nobody but Patty could have supplied that information. And maybe at another time, I'll get into the why, but most likely, you'll have to wait to read it. Like most Catholic wakes, at some point, the priest comes in, and while he was speaking, I was standing by myself with the plague and wondering to myself, what the fuck is going on? When someone tapped me on the shoulder, and when I turned around, it was John. He motioned for me to follow him to the back of the room. When we got there, Joey Lebrano was standing with Andrew DeSimone, and Joe said to me, John, you never met Andrew. I said I hadn't, and he officially introduced us. To save the people the trouble who will ask, what title was he introduced to you as? The answer is, he was introduced with no title. Let me just say, during my time in that life, if I take a guess, I probably had over a hundred or so introductions, and that one was the strangest. Typically, when two guys are being introduced for the first time, after the introduction, they immediately start talking because now they can. We all just stood there looking at each other. And then the guys from the Bronx, DeSalvo, Lebrano, and De Simone, were just talking among themselves. So I excused myself and went back to standing alone. Before I left the funeral parlor that night, John came over to me one more time and again said that we had to get together. I remember looking at him and smiling, and I shook his hand and left. And we'd never seen each other ever again.